Hey guys, so today in part 7, we're going to be doing a few things to the car. We're going to be uh, connecting up the power steering lines, doing the radiator hoses, the power steering lines, and maybe do some interior work as well. Now you're probably wondering, or maybe noticing, there's a slight increase, hopefully, in quality of the video. Um, I mean video quality, that is, and audio quality. So I've just set up a GoPro rig with a Rode VideoMic Pro uh, rather than using my phone. So hopefully we have a bit better quality. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. Okay, so first things first is the power steering line. Now that was really easy. That was um, the standard bolt out of the SR20 or S13 power steering uh, line. Bolted straight into the LS pump, so <laughs> that was a win. Um, but as you can see, the line itself is not quite love and life. It's on a bit of a twist. So what I need to do is take off the bracket, which is down the bottom there, and uh, see if I can re-angle that hose in a bit of a nicer way. Then I need to actually get the lines that run under the engine and make up some clamps for those so they can actually run nicely. Then next on the list, will be power steering lines. Now, on the standard LS, they have these sort of quick connectors. Um, I, I've got fuel line ones, but they're too um, small. These hoses are too small for the fuel line connector. So people have talked about cutting off a little bit of sheet metal and shoving in there. Uh, I'm probably just gonna opt for the more evasive way and just grind them. So I'm just gonna grind them and then just put um, just normal transmission line over it with a hose clamp. Once that's all sorted and I run my trance lines up to my cooler here and I've done my power steering lines, I'll chuck the radiator in and put the hoses on and work out all that and then uh, yeah that's all the lines pretty much done for the motor and then we can start doing things like uh, the wiring and the shifter. So it's getting down to the nitty gritties now. So, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the fuck, this looks a bit different. So, uh, yeah, I did a lot of uh, working on this over the night time, so it was a bit average to film. And I also did a follow-up video, and then I found out later on that I didn't have my microphone turned on for the whole thing, so... Sorry about that. But uh, rather than watching average film, I thought I would explain things to you. So, as you can see, I've got all the front end on. I've got the trans cooler lines done, so just ran some transmission hose and cut off the uh, the old hose there. Got the AU thermo fans on and clearance is pretty good. The radiator hoses, the bottom one is a concoction of uh, two different hoses. I couldn't tell you what car they're from, but I've just used a, uh, a SAS uh, sort of temperature sensor thingy for the middle to join them together. Then these heater hoses here, I've just looped them. They're f usually yeah, for your heater in the car, so they run up to go into the cab. One's 5.8 and one's um, 3 quarter, but a 5.8 hose will squeeze on if you get a, a softish hose. This is a Gates heater hose, so they're pretty pretty thin wall and stretch just fine. As for all the um, vacuum lines for the throttle body, I've just capped them off. I'll get some proper little caps so it's don't have these shitty hoses with bolts in them. Um, for the coolant lines I just blocked off the coolant line. I'm not going to run coolant through the throttle body. There's no need for it in Australia. I, I don't even know why it happens. Probably just for all you people in America where you live in Canada where it's quite cold but for the LSs in Australia we, we don't need coolant running through there. Um, so for the throttle I've just run the S13 cable. It's probably not ideal which could be a little bit longer. I'll probably try to find one and see if I can get like a Skyline or something like that, maybe it's slightly longer um, because I do need a little bit of extra length, don't we all? So I've made a um, aluminium adapter here, it just bolts on, I'm guessing, where the throttle would go on an LS, I'm not quite sure, and it just goes on L. Uh, it is in a bit of an angle as you can see, but it works fine. I have tested it and it seems to be good. For the radiator, I've um, put some rubber grommets in there so it's a bit more isolated it's not going to have electrolysis happening um, which you get if you 
have your radiator solid mounted apparently. I've painted up these brackets and use new bolts so they're pretty sweet. This harness I'll have to um, just cable tie up it. There's not enough meat there to run it where it used to run so I'll just have to sort of cable tie it on which should be fine. Uh, the power steering, uh, the standard line fits. Oh, more of this soon. The power steering line um, fits straight on. The banjo bolt was the same thread and everything. There is a bit of a twist in the hose, but it does fit fine. The power steering, it hits the bonnet if I mount it um, where it usually is. So I've just cut it down, as you can see. And so it's just still the lift tags there, but there's no power steering mount. And I've just remade the bracket bent it and bolted it to the fender here, the wheel arch, and mounted it there, which is pretty good. I need to get a little actual proper curved hose because this one has a bit of a kink in it. It should be fine, but it is heater hose as well, so it's it's obviously going to go rock hard with the power steering fluid over time, but it should be right. Return hose just goes down. I've bent the lines, as you would have seen before. Um, I'll just jump under the car and show you the line setup. So the um, transmission lines, I've just got some P-clamps, rubberized P-clamps and P-clamp it there. Looks pretty fancy, not going to rub on anything. And uh, getting the factory fittings off the transmission, I just round them off, uh, cut them with a grinder, because uh, my 3.8 fuel line fitting tool was too fat, you need something skinnier, so I don't know what tool we actually use, but it's not the fuel line one, unfortunately. Uh, for the power steering lines, I'll just use the standard brackets and just bent them and mounted them to the subframe so the lines are separated and they're nice and strong they're not going to vibrate around anywhere rub on anything they don't rub on anything which is great I'm going up the top so the top radiator hose um, I want to say this is off a Falcon I can't quite remember um, now it's not ideal the setup I have here because as you can see the hose goes this way uh, I don't have enough room to put an intake so the intake can only really go this way which is not enough real room for a four inch um, it's going to be pushing it it's going to be you know between the radiator and this pulley here which means I won't be able to run the battery there probably unless I can just dump it down here um, so the KA24, which is the American 240SX, their radiator has the outlet of the radiator here. So that one will be a lot better, but it's about 350, the Mishimoto radiator. So I'd rather not spend 350 on that if I can spend a little bit less making an intake instead just to work with this application. Um, it's probably better anyway to put the battery in the boot or something like that to make it a bit neater in the bay. So I might end up putting the intake over there. And then this area here is just going to have nothing. I uh, probably could actually mount the battery here, make up a new box, but we'll see. Wiring harness I'm not going to touch on just yet because that's actually going to be in the video after this. So we're a bit bit ahead. We're, a bit, we're jumping around here at the moment. Fuel system. Um, the fuel lines I've bent up, as you saw in a previous video, it comes up. I've mounted, I made this little bracket to mount the fuel pressure regulator on the firewall here off the factory bolt. Um, and then the fuel line tees in, so it doesn't go through it um, because the fitting is a 1 8 MPT, they're not big enough to supply fuel through it. Um, it just tees off, so basically it's just going to work as a line relief for the inlet line. So it'll just maintain this at 58 psi or whatever GM wants, and then it just goes down to the return line back to the tank so that's how that works I've just used a, a GM um, sort of push-on style to, to, to AN um, speedway fitting and then just all hose clamped normal lines no need for ANs for fuel lines really I mean it's fancy looking but there's no real need um, if we jump under the car I can't remember if I showed you this in the previous section but I've got the drive shaft all in And I've cleaned up the um, brackets with gearbox, so they're all nice and painted and new bolts and um, cut around. I've also mounted the wiring to the gearbox and the um, B&M shifter linkage and all that. 
So to get the wiring to fit, I actually had to do a bit of a bit of modification that I didn't really want to do, to be honest. But the guy that's going to do my exhaust is going to make up a new plate to cover all this, so it won't look so uh, ghetto, I suppose. But where the um, the shifter, new uh, what's it called, inhibitor switch on the gearbox mounts, it's there's just not enough room. It's probably a bit hard to see on the camera, but there really is not enough room there for that switch, and no bashing of tunnel would have fixed it. So the only option, unfortunately, was to cut it so yeah a bit of a shame but you get that okay so now I'm actually gonna tee off to the wiring and then we'll come back again and finish off the wiring in the car